Okay, so now we should have Gazebo all installed. We should have Ross all installed. So now, in this video, we are going to launch both of them together. But before we do that, let's pull up a terminal. And normally, I mean, up to this point, we've been launching Gazebo the normal way, right? Just Gazebo and then the name of the world we want to launch. So let's just do Iris Arducopter runway.world and you might have already noticed this but let's look at the verbose output in the terminal so we see a ROS node for gazebo has not been initialized unable to load plugin load the gazebo system plugin lib gazebo ROS API plugin in the gazebo ROS package so what does this all mean this means that within this world file of gazebo we're trying to do some raw stuff, but since we're launching Gazebo just with Gazebo alone, we're not getting access to that raw stuff. And what is that raw stuff I'm talking about? Well, this is referring to the camera feed that is attempted to be initialized when this world file is initially launched. But the camera can't initialize because there's no ROS network up and running. So how do we get around that? Well, you should already have uh, something called Gazebo ROS already installed. So let's pull up a terminal and let's type in ROS CD. That, change, that stands for ROS change directory. And that just takes us to a particular ROS node. So let's go to Gazebo ROS. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's go into the launch directory. And if you don't already have one created, Let's go ahead and type sudo copy and then empty world and let's make a new launch file called iris underscore world dot launch. And that's if you haven't already done this. But what are all these launch files? Well, when these launch files are called by Gazebo Ross, it initializes both Gazebo and the Ross network. Okay, so let's peek on the inside of one of these. I'm going to go into iris underscore world dot launch. And you'll have to sudo into this. Okay, so this, all of this is initializing both uh, Ross and Gazebo. It's launching both of them. If you'll go down here, we can see that we have arguments that we can pass in were set um, for this launch file of ROS. And here we have world name. And what we're going to do is type in our own world name as the default. We're going to type aruko underscore landing dot world. And we'll save that. So what does that mean? Well, if you remember in our Ardu pilot gazebo uh, worlds directory, we have a world called Aruko landing.world. And this is actually what we're going to be using the most um, from this point forward. So we're going to make that the default world that this ROS launch file will initialize in Gazebo. Okay. So we're going to type Aruko landing, hit save, and then we'll get out of that. All right, let's just get a new terminal going. So how do we launch Gazebo ROS? It's very simple. You just type ROS launch and then the name Gazebo, just type RO and then hit tab and then that should autocomplete for you. And now we have to call the launch file that we want and let's call the one that we just created. That is irisworld.launch. And again, what this is going to do is both initialize the ROS network and launch Gazebo at the same time. All right, let's minimize this. And this should be the first time we're seeing this world. It's a little bit different than the runway we've been looking at. But this is the land, this is the Aruko marker that we're going to um, be detecting and precision landing on. Okay, here we are. Now, let's pull up a terminal, and let's look at some new commands, okay? So, ROS topic. Let's do ROS topic and list. And what is this going to do? 
this is going to show us all of the ROS topics that are currently being um, published and subscribed to. So the topic that our camera on our drone is actually already publishing is this one right here, camera color image raw. So we know on the ROS network that we have some frames available to us. So that's pretty, pretty awesome, right? Because we could not do this um, when, the way we were launching Gazebo before. There was no way to access the camera feed. And we can also do this. Let's type ROS topic HZ. That stands for like the, the frequency. And then let's type in that, that topic, uh, camera color, and then image raw, I believe. Yep. Okay. And this will tell us the rate at which this topic is being subscribed or uh, published. So right now it's, I mean, it's coming in at a pretty extreme rate. That's, that's crazy. That's nowhere near the type of frames per second we'll be getting on the real drone, but we will be able to simulate that going forward. Okay. So we know we have our camera feed. We know that that topic is getting some messages. So how do we actually, you know, view that with our two eyeballs? Well, let's pull up RQT. And this is a pretty cool little Ross thing. So what we can do is go to plugins and then visualization. And then let's type image view. All right, so we're image view. And let's pick the uh, camera color image raw topic that we know our drone is currently subscribing frames to. Ooh, and there we go. We know that we can see here on the drone, it's, it's zoomed in pretty close on that black part of that Aruko marker. And here we see that. So maybe we can try and launch this uh, quadcopter up into the sky so we can really get an, get an appreciation for how we can visualize the camera feed. So let's go ahead and launch a SIDL vehicle real quick. Let's go to course route, APM, and Ardu pilot, Ardu copter. And let's launch our SIDL vehicle. And remember, we're gonna have to do that with the minus F and then uh, gazebo dash iris. That'll tell sim vehicle that this is a SIDL vehicle that is intended to launch to a gazebo drone. So we'll hit enter. And again, we should also see the real time factor speed up once our uh, SIDL vehicle is up and running. Yeah, there it's speeding up a little bit. And I'm just going to reposition this camera real quick so that we can see it flying in the air. There's our camera feed. And let's see. And again, interesting, just like a real drone, uh, we have to wait for the simulated drone to have its GPS get a lock and start being used by the EKF. So let's go ahead and wait for that. But in the meantime, let's type mode guided, mode guided. All right. And I don't think we can arm yet, but let's try and type arm throttle. Need 3D fix. Okay, so we're still, okay. Now we have that 3D fix. EKF2 is using GPS. So let's try and arm the throttle again. Throttle is armed. Let's type takeoff 10. And then let's watch the drone go up in the air. And there's our camera feed. So we can, we can actually, you know, access that camera feed of the drone. So this is, this is really awesome because this camera feed we're seeing with our eyes here we're going to actually be able to capture this feed inside of a Python script that is going to have drone kit, it's going to have computer vision, and those two things combined is going to allow us to perform a precision landing application. So this is awesome. If you're at this point, congratulations. This is a pretty big deal.